text name is Let's see, we're assuming This token changed Okay. Okay, why were we passing the name anyway? That's like an extra. That's weird. We weren't even using that. How's it going? How's it going, folks? Sure glad my shell keeps trying to index a null value. Okay, 15 I'm going to defer because that's a different problem. will do. The problem in 15 probably gets better when I work on my library stuff, but we'll see. Okay. Eval expression to literal or constant, huh? Okay, struct open print t comma o colon equals b. So funny to look at fuzzer output. Okay, um, so I 
B. Okay. Check parsed declaration. Uh -huh. Okay, well, I'm going to fix this, and it's just going to kick the can up one level. So that's still going to assert on us. Just do a text search for clink. Wouldn't it be better if they made the software actually work so I didn't have to do this? Okay, wait, it was there and then I hit enter and then it wasn't there. What the f Fuck. Dude, software in the year 2020. Oh wait, it's, it, it's unchecked. Apparently that's not the problem. No hard feelings, just started donating to SETI and had to cut down on your Twitch subs. No problem. You know, we just, uh, you know, we just do subscriptions for fun. So if you, if you have a better place to put your prime sub or whatever, that's cool by me. Cool by me. Has Brett Weinstein replied to my tweets? No, I'm sure he's very busy and probably has better things to do. Yeah, it was worth a shot. I would like to, but again, I mean, it's, you know, my policy about software in general is that if it doesn't work, I don't bother changing the settings. And it's just embarrassing for this program for everybody who shows up and sees this happen all the time. That's just what happens. This is the state of, so I was thinking, you know, cause I got, I just got into an argument on Twitter with someone who thinks containers are like good and reasonable. And I'm just thinking about how like no software works, right? So like of the computers that I own, which is, uh, home desktop computer, a work desktop computer, a laptop, a phone, and an iPad, right? Five devices, five major computing devices that run software. I surely have other things that run software. Um, zero of those devices can be said to work properly, right? They all are just full of stuff like this or like you know, today I was on my laptop. I was about to give a demo of the games we we're working on to someone. And like all the NVIDIA stuff about trying to run on the right graphics processor is just totally screwed at this point. Like you right click on the executable and there's a thing in Windows about run with graphics processor and it tells you which one is the default, but like that's wrong. And you tr there's a thing that says change default processor and you click that and nothing happens. And like, that's not even surprising. All my computers are like that all the time now. Like, I don't know how much of this needs to happen before people understand that things aren't really working right now. They like, they actually used to work better 10 years ago than they do today, right? 
And that's scary. It is scary. And like, how do you fix that? Right? Because if people are claiming that, you know, modern software engineering techniques increase their productivity and stuff, then why doesn't that productivity help us make things that actually work? I mean, I don't believe that story, first of all. It looks like productivity is much lower today than it was. But also, where is that productivity supposedly going? I don't think we have more software, necessarily, in terms of number of things that I use on a day-to-day -day basis. I think it's just needlessly more complicated than it ever was. And it's needlessly slower and less reliable than it ever was. So everyone you see in the web thinks containers are a great idea. I know. It's so crazy how these things come up and like nobody questions them. It's like when the microservices thing was a trend. Now, finally, years later, people are questioning microservices, right? Somebody, I'm waiting for somebody in that world to say, hey, wait, why are we using containers? What do they do? What do they do? <laughs> Quantum computer will save us maybe. Yeah, for two years. For two years. And then we'll make it slow again. A lot of people weren't aware or alive when they worked better. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's de there was definitely a time in the past when software worked worse also, or certain classes of software. But there was, you know, from 1995 to 2009, maybe 2010, software worked better than it did today across the board. Across the board. In the 80s, it was pretty buggy, but there was a period when it wasn't, unless you count the web. If you count the web, it was always, it was flaky during that time too, but not counting the web, things worked better. What do I think about NIM? Uh, I've never used it, but it doesn't sound like um, something that's for me. Do I have a specific standard for what people have to know about how computers work? Well, I don't know. I mean, the problem right now is it's so complicated that nobody really can understand everything. Okay. That's, that's the actual problem. Um, but you can at least try to understand the things under what you're working on. So like, let's say you make container systems, right? Container systems are about getting computers to run programs. Well, I think if you work on that stuff, you should understand very thoroughly compilers and executables and linkers and how all that stuff happens and how the operating system launches programs, all that stuff end to end. And I think if you had a good enough understanding of those things, you would question why you were working on containers, right? In my opinion, I don't know, maybe other people don't have that opinion, but you should, you should seek to understand the things that are underneath what you're doing, right? If you write, you know, web server plugins, understand, understand TCP IP and how web requests go over TCP IP and under what conditions that works well and under what conditions it works poorly. And understand, you know, when, when you're communicating with several other programs, like when your database is a separate program on the same server, understand 
what is going on when you talk to the database and wait on requests and all that. Like you can always look at what is near what you're doing and go out from there. Any plans to do a status update? Um, I thought about it. I don't know. I don't, I don't totally feel like it, but maybe. Compiler motivation video. Yeah, I thought I did that. Okay, anyway, so when I run this, we're going to assert probably. Yep. Okay, so my question now is why did I think that this was infallible? So if we have a declaration, we're in a block that belongs to a struct. God, okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to, I can't stand this anymore. I'm going to exit this shell. And then watch, this is going to fail within the next 10 minutes and I'll have to open a new shell. So we've got a struct declaration and we're saying T comma O colon equals B. So this is, the fact that this is in a struct is what's causing us to crash. Because when you declare something in a struct, you're not allowed to, uh, yeah. So we'll just say, this seems kind of redundant, but we'll make a redundant. Uh, report parse error. How do we do that? Um, Deckel attempt to use a non constant identifier inside a struct assignment. And do we return null? Or do we continue? Do we break, 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 I get return. Okay. Okay. Report parser. Wait, right. this is in ass.cpp. Asked. Okay, this isn't in the. Okay. We we'll use interp report error. Let's see what happens there. I, oh, I was looking for the command line that I was using to debug and it's in the other shell that I closed. Show error context. Boy, we're full of crashes on this one today. Unexpected end of input. Oh, this is the thing we just added. We messed up when we added this the other day. Let's see what's going on. Load is null. Why is asked load info null? That's weird. It's data declarations.
It's just not set yet. Set location info. So for this block, we didn't ever set the location info. Parse block. Ha. Huh. That's really weird. Not that weird, I guess, but that's good that we saw that because that would that would cause error messages to be incorrectly reported anyway. Okay, so now we're reporting three errors. They all make sense, or two errors really. These two are the same error, right? Attempt to use non-constant identifier. Unexpected input in code block. Here's the start of the code block. This one, this one may be wrong. Um, hmm. Because technically you could substitute later in the program. Hmm. Let me see. We need to do something else for that. Okay, we'll do this. Okay. Okay. 
so really, yeah, we shouldn't get that first error yet. So now I'm going to go into it. And I'm going to put the brace there. Dang it. That's not good. Why is that? Okay, hold on. If I just do that. Huh. Huh. Okay. Well, this This needs to get fixed. What else needs to get fixed? So declaration depends on the struct which depends on this is the declaration of the struct why is t depending on the struct itself that doesn't oh you know it might be an infer at a later pipeline stage we're going to have to look at that. I, I might have made things worse when I did my thing. Since you can report multiple errors in a row, how do you decide when to stop compilation and give up? Well, okay, so the deal is we don't usually report multiple errors in a row, uh, which sometimes is not good because, so, you know, sometimes you'd like to see multiple errors if they're legitimate, right? Um, right now, the compiler is architected that after it reports an error, we just don't do any more work because who knows, we might have like some pointer might be null, right? Um, and so we don't want to continue compiling the program. Um, we could, if we really thought it was super important to report multiple error messages, we could you know, do things like have poison values or whatever that we assign to expressions that fail to type check, for example, right? Um, C++ compilers do that, but they often do a bad job at it. And then, you know, the, the fake value that they put in then causes further error messages that are wrong, right? And they flood out your legit error messages. So we don't want to do that. For now, it's just easier to mostly report one error message, but but in that case, we got more than one error message and we let that happen sometimes during parsing um, just because it's not that hard. Uh, but I'm actually, 
we're, we're pretty inconsistent about it. Anything that happens later than parsing, though, we don't do more than one error message unless there's a bug. So that would be a thing, you know, I think we could probably do something better about that whole situation, but I think it's much more important to get features done and all that. Um, with the parser though, even if we report multiple errors, it doesn't tend to turn into error spam because usually Usually, if we're looping, we exit whatever loop we were in that reported the error, and then people will gradually exit up to the top. It's just that sometimes on the way out, we might notice more than one error. Uh, I don't agree with Paul Graham about programming languages at all, no. I don't. It is absolutely not true that program length and simplicity are the same thing. They're correlated, but they're not even that strongly correlated. Like oftentimes a program that is very concrete about what it's doing and that just says all the steps is much more understandable and much more maintainable than something that's tricky and abstract and trying to be meta. Like that, that has been clear over and over and over. Yeah, I don't think that comment is correct at all. Well, I mean, the, the idea of language power that he's talking about there is not that unusual. Like, it's something that you heard a lot in the, let's say, the 80s and 90s. Um, especially at universities teaching functional programming, right? It's just I don't, I don't agree with it. Yeah, it's, it's the style of programming that he's advocating is one that'll drive you crazy. That said, all, all else being equal, shorter programs are better, right? But all else is not equal in this case. All right, so um, let's just break there and see what's going on. If I could even type today. Let's just go up through pipe infer. I actually want to see what it does with that. Huh? Okay. Okay. Let's 
So we do successfully print this cycle, so um, I should just be able to break there. Do, 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 do. Declaration of T depends on zero. That's weird. It's depending on this. This is why I don't like dependencies. It's depending on, I think this is the dummy declaration for the struct. We could check that. And that's depending on the struct body. All right, so let's look. So printout index zero, printout index one. Okay. Node So it's not sleeping on anybody, but someone is sleeping on him. The struct is sleeping on the variable lookup. And this has no dependencies. So my question kind of is, you know, we have this thing that's supposed to report undeclared identifiers. I don't remember how that works because I haven't looked at it in a long time. But like what should happen in this case is we say, well, this identifier is undeclared. And the fact that it's in a struct body is preventing that. Like, you know, if we take that away, You know, then we get an undeclared identifier report. And in fact, if we if we just comment out the word struct but leave the braces, should work. Oh, <laughs> sub blocks at global scope are not legal right now. Um, yeah. So really, the fact that this is in a struct should not, in principle change anything. So I wonder if the issue is just that we're only looking through the identifiers in the top level scope or something. We'll take a look at the code. You'd love to hear my thoughts on why I don't just make it so that it all works. In theory, that would be the easiest thing. What a great idea. Great idea. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> I know, I'll just make it so that everything works. That's what I wish they had taught me in computer science school. Let me get a drink. I wonder if my sodas are cold.
They are not that cold yet, but I want to try a black cherry one instead of one of the gross mango ones that I still... I can't believe how many mango sodas I drank in the past couple days, even though they're gross. Have I played more Pro Office Calculator? No, although uh, the guy who made it said he fixed that mouse issue. Yeah, I agree that computer science schools need to do more engineering. It's, you know, it happens in a lot of academic discipline. Okay, it's been a while since I was at computer science school, but I now recognize, looking back, that a lot of what I was taught in school was idealism. And that idealism did not exactly gel with reality. However, I kind of don't think there's... I don't think there's anything so so some of the examples of the idealism I was taught were things like uh, you know functional languages being great because of blah 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 all the reasons that people say or uh, you know layers of abstraction like templates upon templates or macros in C++ being very powerful and whatever right um, I don't think there's anything wrong with teaching the principle of those ideals because you kind of you kind of need to have principles and goals. But what was wrong was that they weren't being sufficiently tested against reality and or it was not really acknowledged that they weren't sufficiently tested against reality. Like if you said, hey, this functional language stuff is our ideal, uh, things don't exactly seem to work that way and we don't know why, but we're going to figure it out and make everything all good and functional in the end because they're super powerful and whatever. Um, that's a more honest take, right? But I, it's just hard. It's just a very human tendency to do that and everybody does it and I don't know. I'm sure schools today are even a little bit more like that actually than they used to be because... Uh, Objectivity seems to be valued in an ever decreasing fashion over time. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on though for kids these days. Um, People will believe what they well, what they believe. What is happening now on the stream may be considered bonkers in a few years. You're not sure back then that they really knew that functional programming is bad. Well, no, they didn't really know. They didn't really know. They actually thought that if people would just stop using imperative languages and use functional languages like Lisp, that everything would be better, right? Or, you know, Haskell back then. This is the funny thing, is all the Hacker News kids think Haskell is like the hot new language. Dude, people were doing Haskell in the 1990s when I was in college. That's how old Haskell is. It was a much earlier version of Haskell, but it was there. Um, no, I'm not, I'm not faulting for... I'm not saying... What am I saying? I'm saying it's people's... I agree that they didn't exactly know that functional programming was had problems back then. I'm faulting them for not knowing. I'm saying if you're if you're taking your job seriously enough as someone who teaches young people, you need to go really far out of the way to test your hypotheses, right? And that wasn't being done by by many of the people who were teaching me. Some more than others, you know. Cherry drink is okay. I like it better than the mango. Haskell hasn't been hot for a while. Oh, you don't read Hacker News. You said you want a Linux distro without user space and any compatibility. How do you solve the chicken and egg problem without compatibility? 
What do you mean by the chicken and egg problem? Do you mean how do you get users? I would not worry that much about getting users. I would worry about making the system good and useful. Have I taken a trip to our programming circle jerk? No, I haven't. Stop reading Hacker News. It's true. I still go to that site. I don't know why. I shouldn't. My friends make fun of me for still going to that site once in a while. Just every time I need to put a plug in in my web browser that every time it goes to Hacker News, it instead just re-diverts to show the source code in the compiler folder. Programmers won't want to make things for your system if it has no users. Yeah, well, I would be on a very slow growth kind of a mindset, okay? Um, Like, I think if the thing compiles, has a compiler and has programs that can run and has a basic graphical user interface, I'm fine using that. I don't need a web browser. I don't need email. Those things are distractions from work. Um, you know, I can always... I can always remote desktop into a machine that has those things if I get really desperate. Um, and then just working on that system and making it good. Like there isn't, okay, similar to my rant 10 minutes ago about I don't have a single computer that actually works correctly. I don't have a graphical user interface that isn't awful. Windows is awful, OS X is awful, iOS is awful, and Android is awful. They're all awful in moderately different ways. So to just be able to just like sit there and make a user interface where like the clicks do what you want and like, you know, if I click on something in a slightly different way, it doesn't like accidentally start renaming it. Of course, I'm not getting it to happen right now. Right there. What? What the fuck? Why did that happen? I don't even know. It just happens sometimes, right? If I accidentally micro drag this, I'll drag the folder into the folder above it. Like if I just move the mouse a little too much while clicking, like it's a disaster. So like, look at this thing over here. Um, actually, this one's a little bit better than it was on my laptop, but um, like on the laptop, these icons go into like two rows. I don't know why, and they're jacked. Um, here, the spacing is just all jacked. Like, why is that? Why are these on the left instead of the right? Uh, it's because whoever makes this thing hardly ever runs it on the left-hand side, even though with a wide aspect monitor, that's the logical place to put it. Like none of this stuff, it's all messed up, okay? And every single UI is messed up in a different way. Don't even get me started on iOS. So like it would be a great opportunity to have a system without that much software and that isn't changing very rapidly and just to work on it and make it good. So I want it to be a system for development, not for use, at least at first. Yeah, I mean, that's what I need. I need a sane place to develop software that isn't trying to spy on me, that isn't going to reboot while I'm asleep and get rid of all my progress that I made. Um, where the audio system is going to work, right? That isn't encumbered by like a zillion command line programs that I'll have weird quote dependencies, unquote, um, that lets me just compile a program and run it without filling out a 27B stroke six every time. Um, 
Like none of these things are rocket science, but they're so bad. They're so bad, man. It's a bad time for software. It's a really bad time. It's also a bad time for this particular compiler bug. So let's look at This soda makes me burp a little bit. I don't like that. But that's what I get for drinking carbonated drinks. Coke doesn't though, it's weird. This does, maybe it has more carbonation in it in order to get around the fact that it doesn't have sugar, I don't know. You prefer a lot of command line tools? Um, well, you know, here's what I say. If you want command line tools and you want to work that way, I got no problem with you just installing a command line tools package and using that, you know, great. What I have a problem with is this ever, like how many programs need to be on a basically functioning Linux system in order for it to work out of the box? Like, the answer is a shitload. And then there's this culture of other things like running those programs in order to do operations. And that's a very loose coupling that's prone to errors and, and poorly performing software and stuff. Like that's what I don't think is a good idea. Let me put it this way. Anything that you call from a command line, you should be able to call from a library via an API. And why isn't that the case, right? Why can't you make like either a program that calls some APIs to do a thing, or let's just type in the command line version and do that, right? Um, it's just messed up. It's just all messed up. How long would it take to make such a system? I don't know. I don't know. I haven't thought about exactly what the system is. Does non-determinism in the compiler matter? It may matter, it may not matter. Like, you know, there's a thing called reproducible builds. And the idea there is that if you compile your program any two times, if the source code is the same, then the executable should be the same byte by byte, right? So you shouldn't even put a timestamp in it because that would change it. Um, I think compilers should be able to do that, but, but it's clear on multi-core hardware that you pay a cost for serializing your compile in that way, or for well, let's say well ordering it, let's put it that way. Um, because you have to synchronize more to do that than you would otherwise. Uh, maybe that cost can be minimized. I honestly haven't thought that hard about it. Um, but, uh, if you really care about reproducible builds, I think your compiler should be able to generate one. But by default in a multi-threaded environment, it just won't. Like things will end up in a different order. Um, they should be correct no matter what, okay, clearly, but there are many correct permutations of your program. So um, it's, it's just unclear. You can wrap command line API into program API. Oh, you can. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I mean, so I, I really, I have no objection to command line components in general. My objection is like, why are said and awk in the year 2020 core system components that like, if you took them out, shit would just explode, right? That's not a sustainable model, okay? Because like I just tried to explain to someone on Twitter, like over time, you're just building something where things get more and more complicated, but the complications that you're piling on top of each other, you're mostly not even using them and they're mostly not good things by current standards, but they like have to be there or the whole thing will fall over. That's not a good situation and we need to clean that up. 
and we need to clean that up. You don't understand why it wasn't called Linux subsystem for Windows? I can explain that very easily. It's because they wanted the word Windows to go first. They wanted people to be saying Windows. That is the reason. That's how Microsoft works. If you wanted determinism, could you just disable parallel builds? Maybe. Um, there's still things like, you know, so we iterate over the source files. Um, I mean, you would, I, I guess you could come up with a canonical order of what the source files are based on the order in which you encounter them in the program text and put them in that order in the executable. Or you could put them in alphabetical order and, and whatever, I don't know. How is said awk a more complicated situation than depending on dynamic libraries? Well, I don't like depending on dynamic libraries either. So no, it's, 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 it is a more complicated system just because the coupling is looser. Like a script that runs awk is a looser coupling than a binary executable that calls an API, right? Okay. So we add anyone who's waiting on an atom. Well, I don't, are we waiting on an atom? We're not. That's very weird. Why are we not waiting on an atom? Flatten infer cursor zero. Flatten dot data zero identifier. Okay. This we should catch. So here we look at the expression, if it's an identifier. Okay, let's, let's look there. Are we running with no jobs? No Steve jobs? Okay. Um, this thing is uh, 396. Is this in pipe infer? It should be. So explain going to 12. Oh, we said we set yielded on expression. I hope it's the right thing. Oh no. What? Why did we yield on, this is what's confusing it. We yielded on a declaration. which is weird. Um, why did we do that? And is that, there's a little bit of confusion on my head about when we should yield on what. All right, well, let's find when that is set.
Okay, so we're trying to resolve this identifier. We called find declaration. Huh? Do we have a control M in the file, by the way? Yep, I knew it, because we were on the wrong line there. Frickin' frackin'. Release the kraken. Okay. So, we've got this identifier, we're looking it up. It's not a large scope. We're not going to find the identifier, we go up one. It's waiting on a using because it's an anonymous struct. <sighs> okay. Right. Okay, here's what happens. If I say S is this, will work fine. See, undeclared identifier. If I take away the S, now we are not fine. The reason is, we're trying to look up this identifier. We're getting to the file scope, and we're saying, let's see if this identifier is declared in the file scope. But the file scope is saying, well, I'm waiting to import symbols from this struct. Okay. So no, you can't, you can't go up yet. So this guy sleeps on the struct finishing and the struct sleeps. So I'm not sure what to do about that. <laughs> I need to think about it. I'm actually, you know, here's the thing. I've been ranting a little bit today, but I'm in a better mood about it because I feel like we can do stuff about these problems today for some reason. Like, you know, like I'm sitting here, I'm not doing a lot of work tonight because <laughs> I'm stopping and talking a lot, but, um, you know, this is progress, you know, and we just need more people doing this kind of a thing in whatever their domain is. That's all. That's all. What is an anonymous struct? Well, in the global namespace, it probably... The, I mean, you know, it's the same thing as it is in C, right? Which I, I don't know in C if an anonymous struct is allowed in the global namespace, but here we're allowing it because, like, why not? Well, maybe one reason why not is it's hard to deal with. But this problem would happen in any anonymous struct, even one that's inside another struct, I think. So like if I do this, like we're going to have the same problem, I think. Yeah. So like you kind of want something that says you could skip over usings from your own namespace, but that doesn't really work because a using could become a more powerful thing later. Uh, that. Um. 
Um, a using could become a more powerful thing later that renames stuff. And so you can't just say skip over this because any of these identifiers that you're trying to look up must have been in the struct because the using could run a rename or proc on it and whatever. So really, I think the thing to do is detect this situation. Like, look, if somebody is sleeping on a using, to look up an identifier, because we can tell that. We can say like, oh, his expression is an identifier and he's waiting on a using. We can just count that as an undeclared identifier. I think that's fine. But we're going to have to leave a honking comment about that to explain what's going on. I have faith in subsets of humanity. I don't know if I have faith in, in all of humanity. Answering less of the rant bait questions. I don't know if they're all bait questions. I think a lot of them are people honestly asking. Unless you mean bait questions as like people asking things, but also knowing they will provoke a rant, even though they're really asking. <laughs> mm. What is the best cut of beef and why? Filet mignon, because it's the best. What do I think about unikernels? I don't really know what unikernel means. Is that different from microkernel? Here's what I think is that we often today use the kernel to do stuff that it probably shouldn't be doing. Like why like why when I want to talk over TCP am I going through the kernel to do that? That doesn't really make sense. You might say well you want to control access to the network card with permissions maybe. Right? And then it's like, okay, well, have the kernel facilitate an initial permissions handoff between me and the network card, and then I get to use it after that, right? Um, I think on a modern computer, we go through the kernel for way too many things that we shouldn't, right? Most device drivers should not exist, etc. Like, TCP should just be a library that I use. And if I want to use a different TCP that's tuned differently and, you know, is optimized for a different thing, I should just be able to link a different library. But you can't really do that. Did I ever introduce Abner's stream? No. No. I tend to, if I eat meat, I tend to like it not very fatty. And I differ on that with many people who like steaks and such. So my opinions about that stuff is going to be different from most people's. Unikernel is basically OS as a library. Your program is the only thing that runs on top of it. You can run over stuff like KVM or bare, bare metal. Um, I mean, that sounds good to me, right? I mean, we're basically trying to make that happen, but the other way around with all this like hypervisor situation. So like, just do the real thing. That's exactly what quick does, but TCP does not have a zillion configuration knobs. It was standard by IETF from the reference implementations. It has some configuration knobs, but also like, why can't I just have something that's like TCP, but 10% different. And I'm only talking to people on ports that speak that different thing. It's like, well, mm. do 
Do I like venison? Uh, I can't say I've tried it very much. Because many Nicks only have actually fast speed once you do some sort of packet bundling. And that needs to be orchestrated with the packets of other programs. False. False. Because the things that are latency sensitive need the packet to go out right now. They do not want to wait. If you're optimizing for throughput, that's fine. But like... That's something that could be done in the library, right? You can tell the network card, ah, oh, this doesn't really have to go out yet, or yes, it does. Because the middle box will kill your traffic already today, it's very hard to open. Deploy TCP fast open because of that. Well, that's a, that's a whole different problem. But if we had more diversity of traffic types, maybe that kind of problem would not arise as readily. I mean, that's definitely a what if, but yeah. Would I ever consider building an MGUI library? Uh, I would consider it. It's just I've got a lot going on. So we're not doing anything official like that. But like the game that we're shipping has a little MGUI library in it. So you could start with that and build it out. If you want it right now, you are potentially installing other applications. Yes. Yes, you are potentially installing other applications. I want that. When I'm playing PUBG, I want to stall fucking Spotify checking for updates in the background. Fuck that program. I want to scope in on the guy. I want to throw my smoke grenade when I say smoke, throw my smoke grenade, okay? It is not cool for the operating system to decide I shouldn't throw my smoke grenade yet. If Spotify wants priority over PUBG, it gets deleted. Deleted. <laughs> oh my God, dude. Almost all network traffic coming from computers now is bullshit. It's like just all these applications reporting on you or checking for updates or pretending to check for updates so that they can stealth spy on you. You know, um, it's crazy. I'm sure, you know, even on a computer like this, we're like, I... I don't go installing ra random software like grandmas used to back when they used PCs. Um, I'm, I'm pretty confident there's just constant network traffic leaving this machine that I do not want to be leaving this machine because that's just where software is at today. But like none of it actually serves me. None of it is anything that I want. Can we get back on topic? Maybe, maybe. The data is being collected to improve the user experience. It's like when people tell you that you have to follow certain rules for your safety. It's like, is that really for my safety? I don't think so. What was the funnest new topic to learn in computer science? It was a long time ago, man.
I don't really know. I mean, the thing is, I kind of knew a lot about computers before that because I'd been programming for years. Uh, so, I mean, I would say the first time I saw a real multi-processing computer, like not a home computer, but like a Unix workstation that ran a lot of things at once, that was interesting and exciting because I hadn't seen that before. But that wasn't even really in a class. That was just like using a computer that was available at college. I don't know. What would be the point of an anonymous struct in the global space? Well, I don't know. But you can do it. It's expressible in the language right now. And this problem that we're having also happens in a case like this which is even a more legit case where you might really have a reason to do this. So we got to fix it. So let's do that. Uh, let's do that. This might even be the problem with 15 because 15 was a circular dependencies. Let's look at that for a second. Oh, that's imports, but imports also, oh, it's a using import. This is probably the same problem. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So we are going to look for guys that yielded on anonymous structs. And well, yielded on usings. Okay, let's make sure. Okay, let's keep running. Um, so this expression is a declaration, right? And this declaration should be flagged as uh, marked as using. Creation is marked as using. One, zero, zero, zero. Yep. Okay. So when we are reporting undeclared identifiers, we will say Um, we could just say if you're yielded on using Try that. So if it's a using, then if we, yeah, let's just try that. And then I'll document what the hell that's for. This is an expression. Okay. So Undeclared identifier. Let's put it back in the global namespace. Um, um, 
undeclared identifier. That's great. Let's build our regular programs and make sure we didn't screw something up. Once you're done with the same level of functionality, you'll end up with the same number of lines. I don't think that's true. I think there's a massive amount of complexity in our current systems that could be factored out such that you would have the same level of actual functionality, but the systems would be tremendously simpler. I think that's obvious. Like it's obvious even for any single program. So even for this compiler, right? One program that I'm working on, Every time I go back to it and say, can I factor something out? Can I make it simpler? Can I make it more straightforward? I find a way to do that, all right? That is doable recursively on every program in the entire stack of everything. And many of those programs are just completely eliminable, like, you. You could just replace them with other things, right? Uh, you could do the job that they do differently and have the same, you know, just, it's insane how much air you could squeeze out of the thing if anyone like decided to do it, but nobody cares. So uh, we're just gonna have, we're just gonna keep sliding, sliding down the slide of the fall of Rome situation. Whoops. How is Les Rants 2019 coming along? Um, 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 okay. So, oh, I got to document this. I've got to say, um, in simple cases like the following, this is in global scope. This can be in global scope or inside. Let's actually do this so that we can indent another struct, struct whatever uh, x. we get a circular dependency since the uh, resolution, since the name lookup process for the undeclared identifier will wait when it gets to the scope outside the struct because the anonymous struct creates a using and the scope is waiting on that using. So when we get to the time that we are, uh, when we get to the time that we are uh, reporting undeclared identifiers, if I We will just look at uh, the um, expression we were trying to infer instead, which in this case will have been the undeclared identifier. 
this is sensitive to our internal representations and this routine is in moderate danger of becoming vestigial code sometime in the future if usings are set up a different way or if uh, anonymous structs don't work by cre creating a dummy declaration marked as using or so forth. Okay, boom, we have done good work. We have done good work. Let me revert that. Let's see if we happen to fix 15. So I'm actually, if that's all we did during this stream, whoops, then I am cool with that. Because I just wanted to come on late at night. Abner just sent me this new batch. And I was like, let's see what we can do. Wow, we fixed 15 also. Remember I said, let me punt on that because I think it's a different problem. We fixed it, bro. So we fixed 14, 15, and 16 on this stream. I agree that I, so, so I agree with that observation that people like to make things from scratch and also screw it up. Right. So it's, it's not like, it's not like just rewriting things is the answer because it's easy to rewrite things and make them bad again. Right. It's like we need a careful rewriting of things by people who really know how to do it. <laughs> and they need to be willing to rewrite them again and again if they don't come out well. And this requires time, right? Which is why I'm not so worried about that chicken and egg problem. Like if you're just trying to get your operating system running and get users as fast as possible, then of course you're just gonna spit code out and you're gonna do something a lot like what we're already doing and you may be able to make some improvement but ultimately it's not going to be a very fundamental improvement right so that's the same reason so with this programming language it's like i'm not just trying to rush it out and have people using it as soon as possible because i want to make sure it's good and i want to make sure that by the time we start cementing what it is because exterior users are using it i want us to have had a good number of chances to observe the deficiencies of it and fix them before they get locked down, right? Same idea with, a, with an operating system or software stack or whatever. Okay. Um, let's go on to 17. I don't know if, if I get, I'm starting to get a little tired. It's bedtime, but let's at least observe this one. It's a crash in infer. Constructor zero, constructor X, arrow empty brace these are so funny dude i don't know how he's generating these i don't know if they're like markov chains or a neural network or just like genetic splicing i don't know it's pretty funny though pretty funny Oh, let's get rid of our breakpoints. And closing scope was null. Ah. 
How did we get a declaration with no enclosing scope? That is not supposed to be possible. The problem with these examples is everything is on line one. Character 11. It's a literal. It's a number literal. Zero. So, uh, Zero equals, okay. I guess it's this zero, but I'm not sure why that's an expression on the right hand side of a declaration. I think this is really a parser bug. And then the parser let something malformed that shouldn't have gotten through to a later compiler stage. Do we have a pretty printer? Yes. It's not it's not super pretty because we haven't worked on the indentation, but yes, you can we have a library called program print where you know you can put that in your meta program and reprint out the program. Um, it might be, you know, I haven't edited that one in a few months, so it might not a hundred percent be tracking all the language features, but you know, we would revisit that once in a while and keep it up to date. Run that on bug 17. Well, if the compiler crashes before the pretty printer would ever get to it, then it's not going to help me. Share stream hype. Fuzzer programs look like entries for the IO triple C. They do a bit. Okay, so let's look at when this is created. This is taking that long. Oh. Must have hung. The frickin' co-initialize thing didn't help. By the way, we still hang in that once in a while. Okay. So, oh, this is the one that's after the constructor. We don't set enclosing scopes. We 
that's not legal on constructors. Maybe it is, I don't know. We're not, I think, I think we're always supposed to set in closing scope. And we don't. Although, that was a very knee-jerk thing to add that. I want to know why it doesn't get added to a scope when we return. What? Why is it? If I accidentally type a character, I accidentally type a character. Okay. So let's just see. So we make a declaration. What is this about? That's vestigial. We parse the directive. Turn it. We left associate it. Oh, Jesus. So we have a declaration on the right hand side. So this is, uh, this is a weird right here. Um, if right type is equal to ask declaration, this can happen. Report parse error. Right. Uh, Can't uh, have a declaration on the right hand side of a binary operator. Turn. That seems like a weirdly specific parse error, but. Because the hash constructor is not a general expression, it's a, it's a declaration. Why are we not printing the file name? 
Why is it just saying colon 1, comma 11? Let's find that out. File name is null. It's weird. Copying location info from bound. Do I have any advice on how to get better at using these languages? You just use it. It's like anything, man. You practice it, you get better at it. Could I give some examples for C++ projects I've worked on ever since I started programming? I started C++ making video games. I was just trying to do ambitious things, and we happened to be using C++ to do those things. That's just all you got to do. I don't think it matters that much as long as you're trying hard. Um, okay, so... Like something's bothering me here because we're calling copy location info from bound. Does that mean bound doesn't have its file name set either? Is that what that means? Uh, let's go to this one. Or does it mean copy location info? Pretty sure it does copy that. Copy that control. Okay. So bound. Has to uninitialize. Oh. Oh. What? That's not okay. What is bound? Here. What? Oh, that's the, that's the thing we're using. It's the fake syntax node. Okay, so it's expected to be uninitialized. Uh, we're just not setting the file name here. Um, It is redundant, but we're using it right now, so. All right, repro. Can't have a declaration 
on the right hand side of a binary operator. Okay. Let's make sure we didn't break nothing. Troll question. Not going to respond. Recently read the tweet about Linux. Oh, it's our Heisen bug that we never fixed. Ha ha. Um, why don't OS vendors just version their API when they would make breaking changes? Like instead of changing behavior of a function, introduce a version two. Well, Microsoft did that a lot of the time. Um, and that was a very successful approach for them, actually. Uh, they also did a different thing where in, in the Windows world, um, you would have a struct. Dude, we're getting hit hard by this Heisen bug. We should have fixed it, but we never did. Oh my God. So long of not getting hit by it, and now all of a sudden it's everywhere. Um, I wonder if it's dependent on some variable, system variable. Um, so in, in the Windows API, often you'll have, there'll be a field of a struct that you're supposed to initialize to the size of the struct, and then that's how the function knows which version of the function it's supposed to be, right? And that approach actually works very well. When Microsoft sticks to that, it's great. Um, why, why don't Linux people do that? I don't know. I haven't read Linus's rants about it, so I don't know what his viewpoint is on that. Except for all A, W, and X versions of the functions. Well, the A, W thing is a total horrible situation that never should have happened. Like, I'm not saying the Windows API is all good. There's many parts of it that are terrible. But in terms of managing forward and backward compatibility, there are certain things that they did that worked very well. Asked means abstract syntax tree, yeah. Yep, that is what it means, all right. Crash or 18. Load directive is null. Oh no, it's CCC. So we've got some CNC music factory here. That's bad. This might be our bound thing. Or no, what is it? See, this is it must be this one because we're saying report info. Yeah, site. Site is CNC Music Factory. Um, polymorph generating site. Hmm.
that's probably code that used to be correct and is now no good. Interesting. Let's see that. We actually, I want to do a little sprint at some point soon where we improve the error messages that happen when you have deep lots of polymorphism. Uh, so this would be relevant to that. Because if we're crashing, that's even worse than uh, Even worse than providing confusing information. Okay, so what is site? Is it already CNC Music Factory? No. Oh, yeah, this is one of those things. Okay. Okay. So call becomes site, I think. It's argument four. Yeah. Um, this is one of these things where we have a synthetic call up here. It's on the stack. It's even up one more. Yep. Okay. So what we do is... We have this call on the stack and we're saying polymorph on it and the polymorph uh, kills us. So we have to make it not be on the stack. This may not be the only place that does this. It's two possible places. No, that's okay. So it really is the only one. Okay, we're going to make a comment here where we say, oh boy, oh boy. We're going to say we used to allocate this procedure call on the stack because hey it's just temporary why use real memory for it but that was very foolish of us since if we polymorph uh, this call site can get recorded as our polymorph generating site and then we can be very sad. Maybe I just shouldn't use the site. Okay, hold on. Call. Yeah. If we really want to micro up Optimize this later on. We can worry about it for now. Here we are just going to allocate a procedure call here. Sigh. 
Okay. So that's one thing, you know, as you know more about the debug environment that you're in, it helps you debug a lot. So like a beginner would have been really confused by that, right? But as soon as I saw that the pointer was C, 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 I know that that's what the debug runtime does uh, to clear out portions of the stack that have been re returned from. I instantly knew that the problem was we were pointing at something that was on unused stack, right? Uh, or no longer valid stack. And then I just had to figure out why, right? Whereas that kind of thing, if you're a beginner and you don't know this stuff, or you're using a runtime that doesn't help you this much, which older runtimes didn't, um, you might spend hours trying to figure out what the hell was going on there, right? So, yeah. All right. A is not a member of B. What do you mean by B though? That's, oh, B, I see. Yeah, okay. Okay. Great. We fix that. Let's make sure the game actually works. We haven't been running it. I don't think any of the changes we were doing would break uh, the generated code, but you never know. It's always possible. It's always possible. All right, we're working. And I think with that, I think we have arrived at bedtime. We haven't made it all the way through the crashers. Um, I think we're most of the way though. There's like 19 and 20, right? Yeah, 20 is the highest. Let's at least observe 19. 19 we fixed. It's the same problem. Oh dude. Okay, 20. Twenty just exits. Whoa. Oh, oh, we were running the release build, not the debug build. Whoops. Lexer, peak next character. Okay. This is because we are recursing. And we blew our stack up. This is what happens when you use recursion. When you use recursion like they teach you your freshman year in university, this will happen to you eventually.
So, right, the problem here is if I recurse every time there's a plus, then all you have to do is put in more pluses than I have stack space. So either I have to not use recursion for this, or I have to Although no, because we, what are we doing? Because each plus should be an individual token. Like if I were collapsing all of these and saying it's a lot of pluses, this is just a bug actually, never mind. Um, however, there are probably parser bugs that are similar that I'm going to have to worry about, but. Um, for now, yeah, let's see, wait, if it's a unary operator, okay, wait, let's go, let's go further up, just up here, unary right is part, parse expression. Oh, this is in the parser. Yeah, this isn't in the lecture. This is in the parser. Yeah. Okay, this is real bad. This is real bad. Um, I don't really know how to fix this without either detecting that we're going to be out of stack space and reporting an error or switching to a non-recursive parser which has its own problems, or just saying we need more stack space, in which case um, we could do that, but it's not a very elegant solution. I don't know, I wanna think about this one. I mean, it's not that many pluses. Yeah, tail call optimization can't work here because after I return, we do stuff. So even if this was the kind of compiler that did tail call optimizations, which I don't think it is, it wouldn't work here. Now, so the basic problem is like this model of parser is inherently very recursive. So like either we would change it to something that's not recursive or we print out an error for now, like expression is too deeply nested. I think that would be my choice for now. All right, well, we almost got through all of the bugs. This is the last one. Uh, we know what the problem is. And we're going to think about how to solve it tomorrow. You can always up the stack size. Yeah, but the problem's still there, right? Um, you would like to, regardless of whatever the stack size is, like I think the default is like one megabyte of stack or something ridiculously small by modern standards. So clearly we can raise that, but we're only gonna get the number of pluses linear in how big we raise it. So if we make it 10 megabytes or 10 times whatever it is, we only get 10 times as many pluses. What if you just really wanna make a positive integer in your program at some point? Like you wanna really 
really want it to be positive. 10 megabytes of stack space might not be enough. So I think though, I, I'm okay with having a compiler limitation of two deeply nested expression right now, as long as I say that, as long as I say that was the problem and what line it happened on, then we're okay. I just, I worry that that's going to be a slow check. So I'm going to ask my friends who know things tomorrow how they would handle this and we'll see. Stack should be able to expand dynamically on 64 bit without limit. That's true. These aren't even increment operators because we don't have plus plus here. This is literally just positive. This is the plus prefix that you would put before a positive integer. So it's like literally useless. Um, however, they could be minuses, in which case you have to handle them. But like this problem, you know, this problem could happen for anything. Like if you just start stacking out parentheses for nested expressions, you'll get the same problem. Uh, if you actually start adding integers, you'll get the same problem. If you say one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus blah, 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 you'll run out of stack space eventually. What is the D character in the middle of the pluses? That was like a Unicode maleness character. It's to show that males should be positive. Uh, this is a fuzzer that Abner wrote, but he based it on some existing, some papers that people wrote. I don't remember which ones. Yep. All right. Thanks everybody for coming by. <laughs> nine, 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 nine. Okay. Here we have to, we have to do that. Instead of hosting someone, where, how do I search for that? Oh, uh, there we go. Nine. Oh, wait, we need a... I need, I need a clip with more context. Yo. Dude, the video quality on this one is terrible. Nine, 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 nine. Okay, we'll just do this one. Hold on. Video quality on all of these Nine. is terrible. Why can I not? Dude, this is sucks. All right, here we go. Multiplied by Yes. That was that was your mathematics exercise. <laughs> for the day. <laughs> All right, thanks everybody for coming by. And we'll do some more nines on another stream later on. Programming is like math, I guess so.
Thanks, everybody. Uh, we'll show up later. Maybe we'll uh, try to. I bet. I bet I can just catch the exception and print the exception. Like, I just. I want to make sure that's the best way to do it. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Nine 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 nine.